Finally, some news out of the M1E3. Special thanks to the folks over at the War Zone for going to AUSA so that I didn't have to. Now, this is going to be secondhand information that is reported through Warzone that I'm going to kind of extrapolate and expound upon. Let's first talk about what is M1E3. M1E3 is the latest engineering change to the Venerable Abrams platform, which has been around since the 80s. Now, the Army decided to scrap the M1A2 SEP V4 program in 2023 and decided to just kind of keep the M1A2 set version 3s in service until M1E3 is fielded. So the, the set V3s are basically a stopgap. Um, not all units have those things yet. They're still in the process of being rolled out. They've had a few little hiccups with them. Those of you that have been on them know what I'm talking about. But it is a unique capability for the Armored Fighting Force. It features an integrated uh, APU so that you can have silent watch, you can run your turtle electronics without having to start the engine of the tank. Now, talking about what is in M1E3. Now, these are some things that, that have been talked about for years, but we've getting a little bit more certainty that these things are actually going to be happening. Number one is a hybrid power pack. The hybrid power pack is rumored to be around 40% more efficient than the current get multi fuel gas turbine, the AGT 1500, which has been in the Abrams since its inception. Integration of loitering munitions is also being looked at so that the crew of the Abrams can launch its own loitering munitions, like its switchblade, using something called the Perch system or some variation thereof, which is a general dynamics uh, technology that was unveiled at AUSA. It may have been unveiled previously, but it's on showcase out there. Also, there's talk of an auto loader. Now, an auto loader means that you can have a different form factor for the turret. It also means that you are losing a crew member. Now, while that may sound good for the pencil pushers or the paper pushers out there, understand that when you lose a crewman, you're not just talking about, oh, well, you know, they don't have to load anymore. A tank, that is a very simplistic way of looking at it. In actual war, when you're doing combat operations, you have continuous watch. You have four crew members pulling their duties to stay awake and do radio guard. Uh, people doing maintenance. The loader doesn't just sit there and load the main gun and do nothing else. They're also a ground guide. They are a gopher. They are uh, very, very important to that tank. Um, losing, the, losing the loader is something that every tank crew will feel. Uh, the the workload will increase. Now, understanding that M1E3 is going to be pushed a lot towards modularity, so that they can integrate different radios, different subcomponents that are that, that make that thing run. There's also an integrated APS. Uh, so currently, the Abrams has something that can be put on the outside of it called a trophy. A trophy is a American derivative of the trophy APS that was fielded by Israel, but I think it was like Raphael systems, something like that. Um, but it's an Israeli system that has been used on the Merkava uh, quite effectively, might I add. And this is to counter things like ATGMs, RPGs, stuff like that. Um, an integrated APS is something that would be kind of tweaked and reworked to be able to counter many of the existing and emerging threats that are out there to tanks uh, in terms of loitering munitions, in terms of ATGMs, RPGs, things like that. Something else kind of interesting about this is that Dr. Alex Miller, who is the chief tech officer uh, to the chief of staff of the army, which is quite an interesting title, uh, was out there talking to PEO ground combat systems and ground combat systems told Dr. Miller, hey, um, it's going to take like till 2032 before we really have one of these things ready to go. And he said, hogwash. I want one of these things as soon as possible, uh, along with his other teammate that was out there. And so ground combat systems kind of scratched their head. And Dr. Miller was very firm, said, you know, if it's not life limb or eyesight, I need this damn demonstrator out immediately. So when you field it out to the tankers, so they don't have to wait six years to get, uh, you know, their ass in a seat to figure out what works, what doesn't. And so PEO ground combat systems, understandably, was like, oh, my God. Um, okay, so we are going to get one to you, and they're going to have it apparently by December. And the way that it was put is the paint is going to be wet. 
it's going to be very wet. And that is putting it mildly. I have worked in manufacturing at a major defense contractor, everybody knows, and engineering takes time. Um, field testing things takes time. I absolutely understand the need to uh, expedite procurement, 100%. Uh, absolutely agree with that. Uh, if it's not live flow MRI site, we need to speed up procurement. We don't need to conform to this weird esoteric mill standard. Oh, well, this thing doesn't have this right, you know, chemical coating. And oh, this thing needs to have exactly one fifty-eight thousandth of a tolerance on this. It, it's not exactly that. It's like, all right, well, this thing, we're going to probably have a, like a, a foot wide box here that gets, maybe it's six or eight inches deep, that kind of stuff. I'm going off on a tangent here, but understand engineering takes time, uh, especially when we're engineering an auto loader, when we're engineering uh, a whole new engineering change to the Abrams, there's a lot to that. There's a lot of turret electronics, there's hydraulic systems, there, uh, there's the new hybrid power pack and how that works and wiring harnesses and all that. There's a lot to that. And I don't want them to get it wrong so that folks are just like, you know, we're jamming things down the pipeline and all of a sudden the soldiers get a, a vehicle that they just can't even use. They're basically, you know, driving around in a paperweight being like, yeah, this thing would be cool if anything worked on it. Um, so that's also not good too. just jamming stuff through for the sake of jamming it through just to make people happy. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, uh, that that's rough. So that that's just my personal opinion. Honestly, I would love to see more pictures, more uh, drawings, more whatever of M1E3 and what's kind of going on out there. I'd love to see an interior mock-up or photos of the actual interior so we can kind of chew on it, look at it. Uh, is it going to be that kind of Abrams X where they had the capsule that the crew would be in in the hull uh, with an optional man in the turret? Or what's, what, what overall is the, is the concept for this thing? Um, there's rumors that it's not going to be a 120 millimeter main gun. It may be a 130, maybe something. And but talking to when I was able to talk to the Abrams X folks on site at the AUSA when Abrams X was like unveiled, uh, they had no problem putting whatever kind of main gun that the Army wanted on that thing. So I have no doubt in my mind that they could do the same thing over here. It seems like a lot of the things that were on the Abrams X are pretty much what. DOD or the, the Department of War is now that's a weird acronym change um that the, what you know the Pentagon wants to put on this thing what Big Army wants to put on this thing is what was on Abrams X minus maybe that large chain gun that was on the roof of the turret but still why not a freaking massive chain gun um they had two different basically CITVs that the thing uh, could kind of cruise around in. The thing had a ton of cameras all the way around it. Great for situational awareness. I don't know if there would be augmented reality for the crew. I would probably assume so. For those unfamiliar and unindoctrinated with augmented reality, basically uh, everybody's got their CVC helmet on, um, but there is like a little uh, set of glasses that ha allow you to kind of look through the tank and have and you can pick stuff out you're like hey just go to that waypoint over there and then oh cool i'll just drive through you know to the waypoint out there now are those camera cameras vulnerable to small arms fire and shrapnel and fragmentation absolutely but uh you know so it's good to have the backup periscopes there and know that we can't be too reliant on technology because if an emp goes off then we're screwed um things gonna turn into a giant paperweight with it's a, a hybrid ass but, you know, that's everybody else will be kind of screwed, too. You have a bunch of people to shoot with iron sights. You know, all their fancy EOTechs won't work and, and such. But uh, really appreciate you guys checking this out. More to follow on M1E3, so stay tuned.